In this tutorial, I'll be discussing how to create a slider game object. First, we're going to right click, go down to UI, and click slider. So maybe when I said the word slider, it might not have uh, you know clicked what it was, but if I hit play here, uh, what it really all slider is is when you slide this back and forth and it dynamically changes the value of something. Now, this is common in games for volume, uh, brightness, brightness on the screen, uh, any sort of thing, uh, even, even sometimes lives where you'll set, you'll drag, depending on how many lives you want, you'll drag the slider up. So, uh, and, and also maybe even level of difficulty. So there's a bunch of different things you could use this slider for, and Unity does an excellent job at providing us uh, with this slider here. Now first I want to go over the parts of a slider. So in order to do so, let's take a look at this little uh, triangle here next to slider and let's click it. So the slider is the parent game object and the following underneath it are the children game objects. Now that's the exclusion of this event system which isn't actually even parented to the canvas. That's on its own there. But we have three components. We have the background component, the fill area, and the handle slide area element. Now, if we take a look at each of these separately, if we change the color of this background guy here, you'll notice that the background is where the slider hasn't been pulled. But let's hit play really quick. So the fill area is this white space here after the slider has been pulled. I'll demonstrate that by going to fill area, clicking here, clicking on the fill, and now changing this to green. So as you'll see, I could drag this back and forth, and it's transitioning between background and fill area. Now the handle here uh, is actually, right now we have the knob graphic set up on it. That's this little circle here. We could also swap out and put in an image if we wanted to here. So I've just changed the colors of these components to delineate between the three. On the left hand side you have our fill area. In the middle, we have our little handle here. And on the right, we have our background. Now, interactable, this property here, uh, if we go onto our slider, interactable allows you to choose whether or not the slider can actually be accessed. So we actually want to click that to true if we want the slider to move. But in a game where there are certain presets uh, that you don't want the player to change at a certain point, you could actually lock those things. Next, you could also choose the direction of a slider. So we'll come down here and we'll look at the four different directions. We have left to right, right to left. Now the difference here is that the fill area is going to come from right to left when we move the slider. So the closer we get to having a fully green bar, the more of whatever it is we're, we're choosing is. Now we also have bottom to top, where the slider will be dragged from the bottom up to the top, or top to bottom, where the slider will be dragged from the top to the bottom. Now please keep in mind that uh, you could also make a health bar with a slider, right? So you could just disable um, this handle here, and you could actually use a slider to create a health bar. But that's a bit outside of the scope of this tutorial. Uh, in, a, in a previous tutorial, I actually showed you how to create a full UI health bar using a different mechanism. But just know that sliders can be repurposed to also indicate different values like health bars or ammo counters. You can use the slider functionality uh, to create that. Now, sliders here, if we select this component again, also have a minimum and a maximum value between which the range of the slider is defined. Now the function on value changed calls a function when the value of the slider is changed. The function needs to have a floating parameter and also uh, it needs to have a floating parameter that is could also be uh, set up here. So let's take a look at this. So on this slider I'm going to click plus and if you watch my button tutorial you'll see that this is a very similar if not identical uh, layout. Now I'm going to create a new script and I want to call it slider, create C-sharp script, and I'm going to call this uh, slider1, 
Okay, now I'm going to double click on slider 1 here, and we're going to wait until that pops up. Excellent. Now I want to come down here and I want to make a public void slider 2 function, and in here I need, uh, actually let me just make sure that this is not a capital, and I need here a float parameter of value 1, let's just say. Now that name could be anything you want, but you just have to make sure it's a float parameter. Now when the value is changed, I want this to say debug.log, and the message I'm going to give is the value of the slider was changed. Now I'm going to put an exclamation mark there. And now I'm just going to say that. I'm going to save this script by hitting Control S. And I'm going to exit out of this script. Now I'm going to go to the console and just make sure that there are no errors associated with that script. There aren't. Okay. Perfect. So now we could click on this slider one script and drag it up to our main camera. As you'll see here, our slider one script has now been attached. I'm going to go to my slider, I'm going to drag in my main camera here, and now I'm going to choose the function. I'm going to choose slider one, okay? And I am now going to say a few things. I am going to click dynamic float slider, and I actually, yes, that's actually, that should be perfect actually, uh, because the slider where I passed in the float, the float uh, that should work. So now when we change our value here, it says this, the value of the slider was changed. And you'll notice that this number over here keeps going up every time I change the value of the slider. So actually, you need to save us a, saved us a step there because uh, you would normally have to choose which of these functions. But actually, this dynamic float uh, part here, it's actually saying, hold on, you have a script that you made with this, uh, this slider property. You, you have a floating, floating point parameter passed into one of the public void functions you wrote. Maybe you want to use this one. And in our case, it turned out to work for us.